Good morning. In the previous video, we had an introductory session into the soil mechanics and foundation engineering subject, geotechnical engineering one, as per the syllabus. And we had discussed the formation of soil as a material and as, as a construction material. And we discussed the physical disintegration and the chemical decomposition, the sedimentary soil, the transported soil, etc. And later on, we moved on to the three phase system diagram, which we said was something which acts as a foundation for the entire subject, uh, in which we said that soil as a matrix can be divided into three phases soil, water, and air. Whereas so you can see in this figure, you can classify water and air as voids, volume of voids. And depending whether soil is saturated or not, you can you can say that volume of voids is equal to volume of voids. Or if it's completely dry, you can say that volume of voids is equal to the volume of air, etc. And we said that in the in the classic representation, you have the volumes marked to the left side of the three-phase system diagram, and you have the masses marked to the right-hand side of the three-phase system diagram. Plus, we had said that most of the derivations that we are about to discuss is based on the three-phase system diagram. We'll move to the first term based on the three-phase system diagram. It's called voids ratio. The voids ratio is nothing but the volume of voids divided by the volume of the solids. Take a look at this picture and you can see that VV divided by VS and voids ratio is represented as E, small letter E volume of void by volume of solids. Now the usual range of the voids ratio for soil is 0 0.3 to 0 0.6. Though it can vary even greater than 1, the usual range is from 0 0.3, 0 0.6, 0 0.9, etc. Why it can be greater than 1 is for the simple reason that volume of voids for example, you take volume of voids is equal to 2 units and volume of solids is equal to 1 unit, which means out of the entire volume V, 2 parts will be voids and just 1 part will be solids. So that's a case where you can have volume of voids equal to 2 and volume of solids is equal to 1, where E, voids ratio, is equal to 2, right? So in short, VV by VS can be greater than 1 or voids ratio can be greater than 1. Higher the voids ratio, looser will be the packing, and lower the voids ratio, denser will be the packing. Next term is porosity. Porosity N is equal to volume of voids divided by total volume, and it can never be greater than 1. You can take a look at this picture, volume of voids divided by the total volume. Earlier, it was volume of voids divided by the volume of solids, void ratio and now that's volume of voids divided by the total volume so logically when you have an increased volume of void voids there will be a corresponding increase in the denominator as well so everything balance out so that you never have a value of greater than one for porosity next term is degree of saturation degree of saturation s is equal to volume of water divided by the volume of voids or volume of water represented in the system in the volume of voids. In short, S is equal to 1 when you have equal VW and VV or when water completely occupies the volume of voids and then you don't have an air content there you'll get a condition where S is equal to 1 or fully saturated. In that case, this water level will rise all the way up to occupy the total volume of voids. So Vw will be equal to Vv and S will be equal to 1. So obviously S will be equal to 0 when it's completely dry or when you don't have this blue band here and you just have this brown band and the white band which means the soil and the air and you don't have water, S will be equal to zero because VW will be equal to zero and VA will be equal to VV. 
So that's the case when you have a fully dry condition. In every other condition, value of S will be somewhere between 0 and 1 or 0 percentage and 100 percentage. Next term is water content. Water content small letter W is equal to mass of water by mass of solids. Remember this is not volume, we represent it as mass. So it comes to the right hand side of the three phase system diagram, mass of water divided by the mass of solids. Right? Mass of water by mass of solids. It can be represented, usually it's represented in percentage, but it can be represented as fractions as well. I'll just Think of an example, what if water content is greater than 1? It means that MW is either equal to MS or even greater than that. Or out of the whole system of masses, when you take MA, mass of air, as negligible, if water content is greater than 1, it means that more than 50% of the entire matrix is water. For example, if you take 2 kilograms of soil from the field and if you keep it in the oven and if you dry the whole system and the next day when you come, out of the 2 kilograms, almost 1 kilogram or you more than that will be evaporated and what you are left with would be just 1 kilogram or even 900 grams. So which means that 900 grams of soil plus 1.1 kilograms of water was present in the previous day and 1.1 grams 1.1 kilograms of water got evaporated so it means that more than 50 percent of the entire soil mass i mean the entire matrix of soil mass taken yesterday was water so it's there's a chance for the water content to be greater than one or greater than 100 percent Next term, though it's not strictly related to three-phase system, system diagram, is specific gravity. A specific gravity is very common among other materials as well. You have specific gravity of cement as in the range of 3.1, you have specific gravity of water in its purest form being 1, etc. So specific gravity, as we would be familiar with, is nothing but the ratio of the mass of given volume of solids to the mass of equal volume of water or G is equal to Ms by Mw for an equal volume. So it can be written as V into rho s by V into rho w. Right? Mass is equal to volume multiplied by the density. So it comes in the numerator and the denominator as well. And in the next step, what you can do is you can delete Vs because they are common. Equal volume. So what you are left with is rho s by rho w. And for soil, G will be of the usual range of 2.5 to 2.9. So whenever a test result is given to you with G is equal to 1.9 or 2, you can cast a doubt on that test result. Or whenever you are given with a test result with G of uh, soil being represented as 3.2, you can have a doubt on that result. That could be an experimental error usually. Now the two other terms that comes into the three-phase system is air content, AC, and percentage air volts. Now these are two terms written clubbed together on a single slide because students tend to have a confusion uh, between air content and percentage air volts. Air content AC is VA by VV. Earlier we said that VW by VV is water content. Now VA by VV is air content. So air content means that volume of air within the volume of voids. So what percentage of the volume of voids is occupied by air is air content. The percentage air voids is VA by total V. We have VA here divided by the total V is percentage air voids. Uh, compared to the water content, degree of saturation, etc., there will be very rarely a case where you have to find percentage air voids. Even if you have to find air content, percentage air voids is very rarely used in at least in your syllabus. But anyways, for academic purpose, you'll have to study what air content is and what percentage air voids is.